Chapter 91 Arrival of Many People You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Seal and Madame Maya came out of the house, they were already dressed neatly, without a single strange trace. Coincidentally, just as they arrived outside, Yun Xiao also came out from the other house. Seeing Seal, he gritted his teeth until some were almost broken. The satisfied look on Seal's face only made him want to kill him more. Unfortunately, he had no other choice but to contain his anger as he received a sharp glare from his mother. Meanwhile, Madame Maya suddenly said, Prince, the blue cloud god will probably return later in the afternoon. As she said that, she showed a hopeful expression to Seal. The latter pretended not to see her expression, he seemed to be thinking after hearing her words. Surely he will change his mind after that pleasure. Madame Maya thought, observing Seal's expression. She was sure Seal was happy, and wanted that to continue to be the case in the next few days. However, if he wanted that, he should at least please her first. Rumble. And suddenly, the sky above the city shook violently, shaking the entire city, shocking the people more than Seal's arrival. They even thought the blue cloud god had returned, but they quickly discarded that thought as they saw a flying arc emerge from the rip in space, meaning it had just traveled very quickly. The arc was purple and blue in color, having a pair of extremely wide wings. On the deck of the arc, people saw dozens of young warriors, wearing armor and wielding spears. They seemed extremely powerful, seemingly capable of leveling any kingdom. Heavenly Lightning Kingdom Madame Maya suddenly said, narrowing her eyes. It was the same for Seal as he also knew about this kingdom. This was a very powerful kingdom, led by the Thunder God who was in the second stage of the God realm. He was a very brave man, often provoking enemies wherever he was and often not caring about the consequences. The problem is that he is indeed very strong, and is also famous for being very fast. Quite a few supreme gods were unable to catch up with him. They must have come for that tomb. I didn't expect this news to reach the lighting continent, said Madame Maya. She then looked at Seal. Prince, the crown prince of that kingdom, Bernard, is considered to always challenge anyone who stands in his way without caring about conflict, he will probably do something to seize your key. Seal did not lose his composure just because of that. He continued to stare at the ark until it landed on a mountain beside the city. Well, I guess I'll wait for his arrival. By the way, are there any other god factions? Seal asked Madame Maya. The latter nodded. There are some coming, but you don't have to worry about them. They are quite weak, even coming in secretly. I see. Seal then took a step while saying, I'll go back first. He left Madame Maya's residence alone, she did not follow as he also signaled her not to follow him. Arriving outside her territory, he met Mui Xue, Mei Mei, and the other Ice Palace disciples. They were already waiting for him. Their gaze at him looked the same, showing a strange light. It was obvious they were wondering what he was doing in Madame Maya's residence. Mui Xue even looked sullen while Mei Mei was more visibly holding back her expression. Seal, what's your plan? Mu Ishue asked when Seal arrived in front of her. Seal didn't answer right away, he looked around, and finally stared at a certain corner, showing a surprised expression. Interesting, he said in a low voice. Out of curiosity, Mu Ishue and the others followed his gaze. Their expressions quickly changed when they finally knew what made him say that. There, stood a woman with her gray hair in a neat bun, wearing a black kimono dress, and carrying a sword. Her beauty still gave an otherworldly impression even to this cultivation world. Her calm and indifferent eyes could make one want to kneel down to her, thinking of her as a queen. Of course, she was the Jian Wuxin that Seal had met on the Fire Mountain continent, the daughter of the Sword God. Since Seal had already found her, she approached Seal. Her steps looked slow, but it only took an instant for her to arrive in front of Seal, making Mu Ishue take a step forward, and look at her coldly. She was just like Mu Ishue, already at the seventh stage Hegemon, truly a very terrible talent. 
Miss, you didn't come for that key, did you? Seal asked her. If anyone had the most courage to come to him and ask for that key, there was no doubt that this woman was the first. Envy. And she did not refute Seal's question. She nodded lightly. I want that key, but I actually won't act unreasonably. I just want you to cooperate with me, and split the proceeds. Oh. Seal smiled with interested eyes. What if I refuse? I was actually thinking of going into the tomb myself and taking everything myself. I'm afraid you don't have the ability to do that, Jian Wuxin replied. Maybe I can if you help me. Are you kidding? Jian Wuxin asked. I'm sure not, how about we go to a restaurant and talk? I'll show you something, and I'm sure you'll help me afterwards. His words astonished not only Jian Wuxin, but also Mu Yixue and the others. Does he know that woman's secret? Mu Yixue wondered, remembering about their visit to the Fire Mountain continent. Of course, Seal had also spread the mirror jade that hid the video of Jian Wuxin and the Sword God. It joined the video of the Elf Queen. Now, it was already everywhere throughout the realm of life. Meanwhile, Jian Wuxin frowned, continuing to stare at Seal as if trying to figure out if he had anything to hide. She actually felt worried, something she didn't know the reason for. Chapter 92 Conflict You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Seal did not wait for Jian Wuxin's response. He took a step towards a nearby restaurant and was soon followed by Mu Yixue and the others. When passing by Jian Wuxin, Mu Yixue gave her a cold smile. She disliked the woman less because of the previous conflict, so she was happy to see she would be in serious trouble. Quickly, Seal entered the restaurant. He chose a private room, entering there with Mu Yixue while the Ice Palace disciples sat at the other tables. They took the opportunity to have breakfast. Unable to resist curiosity, Jian Wuxin finally stepped into the restaurant. However, unlike before, this time her pace was really very slow. Only she herself knew that her heart was beating violently, something that was beyond her control. Of course, in the end she still arrived in front of Seal's desk. She hid her nervousness well, and without hesitation sat in front of Seal. Her eyes looked at his face, cold and calm. Now you can say what you want to say, she said. Unfortunately, she actually forgot to close the door. Seal had no other choice but to ask Mu Yixue to close the door first. The latter did as he asked while quipping at Jian Wuxin. Is this the first time you're nervous and trying to pretend to be calm? The question instantly changed Jian Wuxin's expression. She was annoyed. What nonsense are you saying? she asked, pushing the hilt of her sword up slightly so that a bit of her sword body came out of its sheath. Mu Yixue, if you want to fight, let's have a fight to the death now. That she was so easily provoked proved her mood really was already very bad because of that threatened feeling. Only, since Mu Yixue was also the type to be easily provoked, her challenge would practically get an immediate response. Mu Yixue took out an ice sword, pointing it directly at Jian Wuxin's face while her eyes became cold as lightning. Sure, let's do it faster, one attack each with no dodging allowed. The dead can only blame themselves, she said. Hearing that, Jian Wuxin who had just sat down stood up again. Instantly, each woman's aura radiated out of the restaurant, frightening even the ninth stage hegemons as they still seemed to be stronger than them. Seal who had the goal of threatening Jian Wuxin didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he saw the commotion of the two women. This was certainly not what he wanted, but because of a small thing, they suddenly wanted to kill each other. The main problem was that their personalities were very hasty and too easily controlled by emotions. Under ordinary circumstances where he did not enter into their lives and they were in conflict like this, Seal had no doubt that they would actually kill each other. This was already a personality that they could not seem to shake off. Can you girls stop? Seal finally spoke. Ishue, please sit down. Dot upon hearing his words, Mu Ishue immediately put her weapon back away. She then sat down beside him. 
Right after she sat down, Seal reached out his hand to her hair, stroking it gently, an action that surprised Mu Yishue and Jian Wuxin who saw it. Even if you don't like her, you should learn to be friends with her, Seal said to Mu Yishue, speaking of Jian Wuxin. After all, soon she'll be my woman and you two will both be my protectors. What? Seal's words instantly made the two women's mouths open simultaneously as if they had one soul. Mu Yishue was not only surprised, but also panicked and scared. How could she not, she had already made enemies with Jian Wuxin, now Seal was suddenly talking about that woman becoming his woman. Didn't that mean they would share the same man? Actually, Mei Mei was currently putting her ear to the door of that private room. She was trying to listen to the conversation inside. She was initially surprised when she heard Seal talk about Jian Wuxin being his woman, but at the same time, she suddenly felt elated that Mu Yishue finally had a formidable rival. Ah, maybe later they fight when Seal isn't around. The end result is better if they both die together, then I'm the only woman beside Seal. Mei Mei's imagination was starting to run wild, already thinking of a future for herself. As for Jian Wuxin, when she was finally able to calm down, she directly pointed her sword at Seal. What do you mean by saying that? You think I would give myself up to a weak man like you? She shouted at Seal. Her expression was not as cold as it was when she was staring at Mu Yishue, after all, hostility between a woman and a woman had a difference with hostility between a woman and a man. She was calmer, but seemed more domineering. Seal laughed at her words. However, he was in no hurry to show her the mirror jade. Do you know, Ishue also said that too but look how she is now, he said which made Mu Ishue blush. I'm not an ice palace disciple, I'm not bound to you, Jian Wuxin replied. Sure, but do you know, Ishue was already my woman even before I met the ice goddess. If you don't believe me, you can ask her. His words were naturally so shocking to Jian Wuxin that she spontaneously looked at Mu Ishue. The latter was actually uncomfortable that she had to say such a thing, let alone to Jian Wuxin. Unfortunately, this was Seal's request and she was uncomfortable if she didn't do it. In the end, she looked at Jian Wuxin with a look as if she already knew her fate. Although I don't like you, but he is telling the truth, and I have absolute confidence that you will choose the same path as me. Of course, you may now think that you are ready to die, but believe me, your death means that you will leave behind troubles that make it impossible for you to die in peace. Oh, I'll even bet. If you don't choose the same path as me, I will cut my own throat. Jian Wuxin, dot. Chapter 93 Panic You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Jian Wuxin was of course speechless after hearing Mu Yishue's words. She might not like this woman, but she did not doubt her words because she knew that she was not a woman who liked to say nonsense. Subconsciously, she stared at Seal's face, becoming more frantic, not understanding what the fault of her life was that she was required to submit to this man and become his woman. Seal who felt that he had played around enough finally took out the mirror jade, placing it on the table. He touched it until it emitted light that formed a screen. The screen then displayed the scene where Jian Wuxin and Elder Meng were walking down the tunnel into the underground. Jian Wuxin's eyes couldn't open any wider when she saw that, she staggered until her back hit the wall. You. You. She pointed at Arthur in disbelief. You followed me, she asked. Apparently, she was thinking similar to the Ice Goddess and the Elf Queen, but obviously it made sense, unlike Mu Ishue's case where he suddenly appeared at her doorstep and videotaped her inside the bathroom. Plus, at that time he even told her that his eyes could see everything. This time, he just smiled so it was as if he was agreeing to Jian Wuxin's question. Only, when she saw the video, Mu Ishue frowned because it wasn't what she wanted. She thought she was going to see Jian Wuxin's embarrassing scene. Of course, she didn't think it couldn't suppress Jian Wuxin given her current reaction. She began to wonder what exactly was the secret of the video that Jian Wuxin was so frightened. The latter kept staring back and forth between that video and seal. 
she wanted to see where the video had gotten to. What made her wonder was why she and Elder Meng didn't feel anything at that time. And did her father not feel anything either? Quickly, the video reached the large gate where Jian Wuxin paused. She opened the gate, revealing the hall behind it. Even when she entered the gate, the screen still showed her back, making her think the recorder was really behind her. At this point, she couldn't calm down anymore. Her body began to break out in cold sweat. Stop it, she said, hitting the jade with all her might until it shattered and the video disappeared so Mu Ishue couldn't figure out the real problem. Of course, the jade could still be destroyed with great force as it was made with Seal's current power. It just couldn't be activated by anyone other than Seal. Unfortunately, destroying the jade didn't make Jian Wuxin calm down because she didn't think that it was the only one. Seal stood up, walking towards the frozen Jian Wuxin. Even when he arrived beside her, she was still frozen. Now what are you going to say, pretty lady, asked Seal, then hugged her from behind, creating a scene that made Mu Ishue's eyes open wide. Surprisingly enough, Jian Wuxin still did not react as if she was unaware that she was being hugged by Seal. The latter couldn't help but enjoy the woman's body. She might have a similar body to Mu Ishue, but the dress she was wearing was very different. It was tight so her waist looked slimmer while her ass was more plump. Seal could clearly feel the softness of her ass by hugging her from behind. Seeing that she didn't react, he went further, resting his chin on her shoulder so that he could smell the fragrant scent of her hair. That seemed to work in getting her to react. Her face blushed when she finally felt the man's hands on her waist. Stop it, she said, but didn't try to push him away. Even her voice sounded soft, clearly afraid of being under threat. Under any circumstances, no one is fearless when under threat. Some people may be able to calm down because they do not fear death at all, but in conditions where death cannot be chosen, it is indeed difficult to calm down. Even the ice goddess, the coldest of women, is no different. You only have two choices, Seal said. Challenge me and that video will be known to everyone in the realm of life. Don't think that I only have a few reserves, in fact there are thousands of mirror jade that I have scattered across the great continents. That information only made Jian Wuxin even more frightened. The problem was that if the video spread, it wouldn't just be the people associated with the sword god who would be in trouble, but the sword god itself. A group of gods would definitely come to the place where he was, and do whatever they wanted. Seeing Jian Wuxin speechless, Seal smiled and continued, Now the second option is to become my woman, be loyal to me forever, and that video will be kept safe. In fact, I can even ask the Ice Goddess and the Elf Queen to help your father. Although under ordinary circumstances they would definitely do something bad to your father given his condition, but I can make them do the opposite. Upon hearing that, Mu Ishue widened her eyes, she suddenly guessed something, a very critical matter happened to the sword god, but how is that possible? Mu Ishue couldn't think of a scenario where a supreme god could fall into such trouble. Plus, in battle, the sword god was one of the most superior. Meanwhile, Jian Wuxin's breathing quickened. Although Seal had previously said his wishes towards her, but different conditions made things sound different. If she could previously assume Seal was just saying nonsense, that became impossible for now. She gritted her teeth several times, as if she wanted to say something but could not. Seal enjoyed every change in her expression. His fingers that were on her stomach moved slowly, caressing that beautiful belly. How can you do all that? And apparently, Jian Wuxin was asking about that. Or perhaps she was unable to say anything else besides that. Chapter 94 Come You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. He he he. Seal laughed as he heard that question, which he thought was rather silly to ask. How about you just say your choice, he said. Of course, it was really something too difficult for Jian Wuxin to answer, even her eyes went blank. Mu Ishue shook her head as she looked at the scene. This was a little different from her at that time. Back then, Seal was more aggressive in forcing her, 
probably because Seal also held a grudge against her, in contrast to Jian Wuxin who only had a minor conflict with Seal. Hua. 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 Seal had yet to get an answer from Jian Wuxin when she suddenly heard the sounds of extremely loud footsteps from outside. It seemed that the people producing those sounds were wearing shoes made of iron. Seal glanced at the window, discovering young soldiers wearing armor. They were people from the Heavenly Lightning Kingdom. Someone really came quickly, well, looks like we have to deal with them first, Seal said, letting go of Jian Wuxin's waist and taking a step back. The woman breathed a sigh of relief, glancing down with reddened ears. Damn, how can fate change this quickly, father, I've let you down, she thought. She wanted to cry, but she was used to being a strong woman. Crying in front of others was something very difficult for her. Meanwhile, when Seal stepped up to the door, he said, follow and help me, I'll see your answer from there. He opened the door, startling Mei Mei who was standing in front of it. She hurriedly ran away with an embarrassed expression. In truth, she didn't understand what was happening, but was now fully convinced that Seal had conquered Jian Wuxin. When Mu Yixue took a step, Jian Wuxin also took a step. Seeing that, Mu Yixue smiled coldly. I thought there was more drama before you gave up, but it seems you're the type to give up easily, not as good as the rumors, she told her. Jian Wuxin who was in a bad mood naturally became angry with her again. She showed her a murderous look, but it didn't last long. After that, she took a breath, trying to calm herself down as she didn't want to be provoked. She knew that being provoked under the current circumstances could change things for the worse. Mind your own business, she said in response. Meanwhile, the disciples of the Ice Palace looked annoyed that their breakfast was interrupted. One by one, they looked at the group of soldiers with cold eyes. Fighting with the other faction's disciples was definitely something they had never feared. Even if they were all women, they were the most powerful group of women. In history, when there were certain places that only the younger generation could enter, the Ice Palace disciples had often been the biggest winners. In other words, they had defeated the disciples of other god-led factions. Only the Heavenly Lightning Kingdom, they didn't take it seriously. Even if its crown prince was said to be one of the rare geniuses, they doubted he could compete with Muishue. Before long, the group arrived in front of the restaurant. They lined up neatly there and then opened a lane in the middle of them. Three young men stepped from there, two looking imposing while the last one could truly be said to be a domineering king. Despite being young, he had an aura that could easily subdue the experienced elders. He was extremely tall, having long black hair that went straight down. Today, he was wearing a golden robe with a purple dragon emblem. Occasionally as he stepped, several bolts of lightning appeared around his body. Surprisingly enough, he was also at the seventh stage's hegemon. Even the two men beside him were at the sixth stage. The Ice Palace disciples were a little surprised by that because after Mu Ishua broke through to the seventh stage, none of them were at the sixth stage. Seal, I'm sure you already know the man in the middle, but you might not know the other two. The one on the right is Parker, son of the Storm God, and the one on the left is Owen, son of the Wave God. Those two gods are still at the first stage, but they're very close to the Thunder God, almost like brothers. Mu Ishue suddenly spoke to Seal through voice transmission. Hearing that, Seal finally looked at the two who did have to admit that they had above average qualities. Yun Ming and Yun Xiao were actually still inferior to them. Of course, there were many factors that caused them not to be as good as those two men. The two of them had probably already obtained an inheritance, beating out their other siblings. Their status was already fully established. When Yun Ming or Yun Xiao had already gotten their inheritance, they could have been even better. I think I met the son of the gods too soon, Seal said. Ignoring them, there were still some watching from afar. Seal then looked at the man wearing the golden robe, Bernard, the son of the thunder god. The man was also staring at him. His eyes were cold and sharp, like a wild wolf that regarded all other creatures as prey. 
He was definitely not like Yun Xiao who was also rumored to be domineering before he met Seal. Rather they were similar, but Yun Xiao was like a little boy compared to Bernard. Plus, this man was clearly used to slaughtering. His cold gaze alone seemed to hide a sea of blood. If those who came into conflict with him were people with no background, it would be practically difficult for them to be able to live peacefully. They could be considered one step away from total destruction. Unfortunately, that case did not apply to Seal. As their gazes met, he calmly asked, Do you also want that key? When saying that, he even took out the key, dangling it on his index finger, seemingly not worried about any dark hands coming and stealing it from him. Chapter 95 Mu Ishua vs Bernard You are listening at novelfull.audio Bernard's gaze quickly fell on the key. His eyes showed great eagerness. Something great should be in the hands of a worthy person, he said, looking at Seal's face again. You can scare others with your background, but it won't work for me. If you don't want any conflict, hand over the key now. What he said was quite shocking to the people watching. They didn't expect him to be that bold, directly threatening Seal. Mei Mei who had previously run into a corner became angry. Who do you think you are? If you want to fight, we will definitely accompany you, she shouted, kicking a table that flew straight towards Bernard. Before the table hit the man, a bolt of lightning suddenly appeared, turning the table into ashes in an instant. Bernard stared at Mei Mei, showing a bloodthirsty gaze. It scared Mei Mei enough that she had to take a step back. Roar. However, Mei Mei's bear that was outside couldn't stay still. It roared towards Bernard, seemingly challenging him to a fight. Unfortunately, a monkey suddenly appeared in front of the bear. The monkey was only human-sized, carrying a long stick. It stood on its stick which it stuck in the ground, staring at the bear as if challenging it. Two beasts that cannot speak naturally rarely stop when they already have intentions. In an instant, they charged at each other, shaking the streets as they slowly moved away from the restaurant. Their strength apparently frightened many hegemons so that none dared to approach. You seem to be fully prepared, Seal said to Bernard. He wouldn't be surprised if the man was also escorted by a demigod. Whoosh! A black spear appeared in his hand, surrounded by purple dot-colored lightning bolts. They were ferocious and overbearing, letting out a continuous roar. He also removed his cloak, tossing it aside. Apparently, he was wearing a battle suit made of thin armor, but it was clearly stronger than the average armor. Let's begin, he said. It seemed that he didn't want to delay this either. Hearing his words, all the Ice Palace disciples immediately stood up, taking out their swords and spears. At this moment, Mu Ishua stepped forward, looking at Bernard while the latter also looked at her. Miss Mu, I heard that you have such an amazing ice talent that the ice goddess took you as her disciple. You are a worthy opponent to hone my lightning power, he said to Mu Ishue. In response, Mu Ishue suddenly pointed her hand at the two men by Bernard's side. Come forward, you three, it's enough for me to fight you, she said in a cold and confident tone. The people who heard her words could not help but be amazed, thinking that the disciple of the ice goddess did indeed possess courage above the rest. Invited to fight as well, Parker and Owen looked at each other. The latter then laughed, creating waves around him. Dot, Miss Moo, perhaps the two of us are enough to fight you, there is no need to add Brother Bernard, or you will be doomed, he said. It seemed that he was the type who often thought that he was strong enough to challenge anyone. Then, he assumed that Bernard was already invincible. Mu Ishue smiled coldly. She did not reply with words, but took a step forward. Whoosh! She moved through the air, not fast actually, but her arrival was like the calm before the storm. Humph! Bernard snorted coldly, lunging straight at her. He was the type who didn't like being attacked early, he would naturally go straight for the kill. Since their cultivation levels were equivalent, so people were watching the fight seriously, wanting to see who was stronger between the Ice Goddess Disciple and the Crown Prince of the Heavenly Lightning Kingdom. 
The latter was actually more popular because he often came to various places to fight. Hence, people often looked at him as an impassable wall. It was different with Mu Yishue. No one had ever seen her fight, it was only said that she was a disciple of the ice goddess. People looked up to her more because of the goddess reputation. As for her strength, they weren't really sure, was she as strong as Bernard who fought often. Bernard with his speed immediately arrived in front of Mu Yishue and he directly thrust his spear into the woman's body. Bolts of lightning gathered at the tip of the spear, sharpening it to its sharpest point. I heard that the ice palace is most superior in defense, considering that you learned many of the ice goddess techniques, I want to see if you are able to stop my spear, said Bernard. Mu Ishua smiled coldly when she heard his words. She casually moved her finger, it produced a pool of cold energy which then formed an ice shield. At first glance, it seemed thin, but it gave the impression of being completely impenetrable. Bang! Bernard's spear slammed into the shield, producing a loud bang. And it caused countless eyes to open wide, including those powerful beings watching from afar. Not to mention damaging the shield, the spear failed to even scratch it. More than that, Bernard staggered backwards due to the shockwave generated by the collision while Mu Ishue continued to move forward. How is that possible, said the young people, unable to believe the result. Mu Ishue had only parried with an ice shield that seemed simple, but it easily broke Bernard's attack that seemed so terrifying. Seal himself was shocked at the sight. He wondered if Mu Ishue was indeed that strong that the son of a god with a huge battle reputation could look weak. Bernard also looked incredulous, he hurriedly stabilized his body as Mu Ishue arrived in front of him. The woman took out an ice spear then swung it towards Bernard. The latter naturally responded in the same way. Bang! Their spears collided, producing vibrations over a wide area. The result was even more shocking. Bernard was thrown quickly, hitting the wall of another building. You! Parker and Owen opened their mouths, unable to believe what they were seeing. Usually, even when Bernard lowered his cultivation by one stage, he easily suppressed them. However, in front of Mu Ishue, Bernard even looked helpless. What difference was this? Chapter 96 Week You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. You monkeys, Mu Ishue suddenly said to them. She then swung the spear in a swift motion. Because they were unprepared, they were hit by the spear on the head. Each was thrown in different directions, none could even put up a fight. The difference in their strength was too great. Boom! An explosion occurred in front as Bernard stood up. His expression was very gloomy, looking like he wanted to eat a whole human being. He who had never lost a fight against an enemy with the same cultivation was suddenly easily cornered by Mu Ishue, his mentality could not help but be hit hard. He often talked about reality to the people who challenged him, telling them how useless they were in front of him. However, today, he suddenly discovered a reality that seemed to be specific to him. Charge! Suddenly one of the Ice Palace disciples shouted, making the others move, attacking the young warriors. Because they were in a state of shock, so they were somewhat unprepared, some were killed outright. There was no need to doubt the cruelty of the Ice Palace disciples. They may all be women, but they were women who were also trained to commit massacres. On the other hand, Mu Ishue faced Bernard calmly. Show me your strongest technique so that this fight won't take long. Of course, I suggest you run now, she said. How could Bernard take such mockery? I will kill you, he shouted. Boom! Countless lightning bolts appeared around him, then enveloped his body, forming a kind of new body that was three times larger. He was like armor, but in Seal's eyes, he looked more like a robot created from layers upon layers of lightning. Whoosh! With that form, he was apparently much faster. He appeared above Mu Ishue's head, directly attacking her with his spear that was also lightning dot coated. Die! Bernard shouted again. Most men probably wouldn't say that to a beautiful woman like Mu Ishue, 
but that didn't apply to Bernard who couldn't control his emotions. In fact, he was actually thinking of approaching Mu Yishue after defeating her because he was amazed by her beauty. However, that was no longer possible now unless there were certain circumstances that could make him calm down. So this is all you can do. Mu Yishue did not lose her composure just because of Bernard's new form. It still seemed weak from her point of view. Too long. Suddenly, Jian Wuxin, who was standing slightly behind Seal and had not attracted anyone's attention until now, suddenly moved. She lunged towards Bernard while drawing her sword. When she arrived in front of him, her sword was already out of its sheath, moving swiftly to his neck. Her sudden arrival startled people, especially her speed which was so fast that even the peak hegemons barely saw her. And her sword easily pierced through Bernard's lightning armor. The man could not have been more surprised than this. It only took an instant for the sword to hit his neck, splitting it instantly. Damn it! Bernard hastily moved, managing to divert the direction of the sword with his hand. Of course, that ended up causing his hand to be cut off until blood gushed out. He did not scream, but only became more grim. At this point, he had no more courage. After successfully jumping once, he tried to escape, even shouting to order the others to retreat. She's the sword god's daughter, Miss Jian. People quickly recognized Jian Wuxin. Why did she attack Bernard? Another asked. I don't know, but don't you realize, she stood behind the ice prince from the beginning, this is strange. Yeah, but her strength is amazing. She and Miss Mu are clearly on different levels. Not strange at all, the sword god's daughter clearly inherited some of her father's talent while Miss Mu, despite having an inferior background, but her talent is completely on another level. The ice goddess accepting her as a disciple must have a clear reason, dot. Apparently, Qian Wuxin did not stop after attacking Bernard once. She chased after him, showing a murderous gaze. This made people panic as she seemed to want to kill Bernard. Girl, you dare. Suddenly a hoarse voice echoed from the sky. From there, a bolt of lightning appeared which then formed into an eagle. It wasn't very big, but the vibrations produced by its appearance were enough to distress many people, even the demigods. When people stared at the lightning eagle with narrowed eyes, they suddenly realized that there was a thin old man inside. Some old hegemon said after seeing him, he's the second elder of the heavenly lightning kingdom, a third stage demigod. I didn't expect that he also came along, that kingdom is really serious about the mountain king's tomb. That's not strange, if the news spreads further, there will definitely be more coming. Even those from other realms will definitely come. Fortunately there doesn't seem to be anyone spreading the news crazily. Although there was a teleportation formation that could send people to very distant places, the resources required for places too far away were also too great. People could not go as they pleased. The few who came from afar at this time were in reality only because they happened to have envoys on this continent. This old man isn't crazy, is he? Does he dare to attack the daughter of the sword god? An elder wondered. Wait, did that woman come here alone, where are her bodyguards? Doesn't the sword god have many subordinates? I don't think there's any sign of a demigod with sword power around. Whoosh. However, suddenly something black appeared right behind the second elder's back. It had the shape of a short spear, having an extremely sharp tip. Surprisingly, from the moment it appeared, the air instantly became extremely cold, and it was a cold that was a combination of icy cold and the cold produced by an extremely strong killing intent. Chapter 97 Deaths You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. What is this? Even the demigods trembled as they looked at the strange black object. The problem was that it appeared too suddenly, as if it was instantly created out of thin air, created directly by nature. Absolutely no one could sense its existence. It could only be seen, anyone's instincts going blank when not seeing it. Maybe it's ice, said a demigod who seemed to know a lot of things. Because of this, people began to remember a certain figure, 
a figure who was greatly feared for her killing ability. Now that I have no doubt, it's the attack of the ice goddess third disciple, Kaya, who is a divine knight snow eagle. It is unexpected that she is here, as expected of the ice prince, his status is too high, even the one guarding him is a terrifying figure. Shua. The ice spear easily pierced through the second elder's back, causing his eyes to open wide. How could it not, it pierced right through his heart, and the attack damaged every part inside his body, even his soul began to crack. That signaled that his death was certain, he was just waiting for the process. Damn girl, the thunder god will definitely kill you to avenge me. In the end, he only shouted and cursed. Kaya's figure still did not appear, but her voice suddenly echoed. A weak human like you shouldn't try to become an eagle in front of me. This is your punishment and if the thunder god doesn't accept my actions, he can come looking for me. Bang! The man's body shattered, scattering lightning everywhere. Some brought down mountains. Bernard turned even paler as he saw that. He didn't expect that he would fall into a situation like this in such a short period of time. The problem was that he had never experienced it. Every conflict in his life had always been won in a dominating manner. Unfortunately, today he was completely dominated, made completely helpless. Now, he realized why the Ice Palace had a much higher reputation than the Heavenly Lightning Kingdom. Their second elder was easily killed by one of the Ice Goddess disciples, and he himself who was regarded as a rare genius lost in an extremely humiliating manner. Plus, there was one woman who was still after him and wanted to kill him. He began to worry about death even though he had always thought that he would not fear death. There were even thoughts of screaming and calling his father, hoping he would hear, and come to his aid. In truth, he really didn't have any protection formation in his body even though he was the son of a god. BL.net This was the result of his own will as he had always believed that he would not lose to anyone at his age while those who were already strong like the demigods should not dare to do anything to him. And he was never worried about the gods because there were also few gods who dared with his father plus they usually wouldn't do anything to the younger generation unless they made them very angry. Whoosh! Jian Wuxin easily chased after the man. She passed by him and stood up to block his path, making him stop. Because of his injuries, his aura became chaotic and his breathing became unstable. Miss Jian, I don't think there's any enmity between us, he said in a heavy tone as he had trouble speaking. At this point, he could only use words, hoping that Jian Wuxin would change her mind. Unfortunately, this one had power over him plus a stronger background than him so he was completely helpless. Threats are useless to Jian Wuxin. And she did not respond to Bernard's words. Her body moved, gliding towards him with her sword pointed forward. She attacked this man out of her own desire because she thought Mu Yishue was taking too long. However, the reason she really wanted to kill him was because it was Seal's order. She couldn't refuse, worried that things were bad for herself. There was no other choice at the moment but to obey Seal's order. Bernard was unable to move as Jian Wuxin's spiritual energy suppressed his body. Jian Wuxin easily arrived in front of him and instantly slashed her sword at his neck. Bernard's eyes trembled uncontrollably, and his expression began to show madness. You whore, I know now, you sold yourself to that boy, ha 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 Miss Jian, you and Miss Mu seem to be just horny whores. In the end, he screamed, saying the nonsense he could say. He hoped that his words would at least cause bad rumors to the two women. Of course, none of that could stop his death. His neck was severed and his head was severed from his body, falling to the ground with an expression full of rage. Jian Wuxin's sword slash was surprisingly gruesome. It also directly cut through his soul, causing immediate death to him. No. Parker and Owen who were watching from afar shouted with horrified expressions. Bernard's death meant they had to give an explanation to the Thunder God and their own fathers. However, that wasn't really necessary either. Mei Mei's bear appeared beside them. It had already finished fighting with the monkey as the latter had run away. 
Casually, the bear hit each of them with each of its fists. Bang! Bang! They were instantly flattened to the ground, dead without being able to retaliate at all. The difference of four stages of cultivation plus the terrifying strength of that bear made things end quickly. And they also didn't have any protection formation because they were influenced by Bernard's thought that they would be fine. Meanwhile, Seal who was watching from the front door of the restaurant shook his head while laughing softly. He thought he was more powerful than he thought. The speed at which this matter was resolved could be said to exceed his expectations. And this was enough to scare the other sons of God. They were weaker than Bernard, on average only on par with Owen and Parker, so their fate would not be good if they also challenged Seal. Seal could see that they had decided not to try anything. They didn't go just because they wanted to know what was really in the Mountain King's tomb. Chapter 98 Like a Sword You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio It's time to go to the tomb, Seal said to Mui Shue and the others. The former nodded, but she said, Seal, if you can, you should ask those two madams to close all teleportation formations so that news of Bernard's death doesn't spread out. Honestly, there is still a possibility of danger if the Thunder God finds out. Seal agreed with her suggestion as it made a lot of sense. However, before he could do anything about it, a tremor suddenly occurred in the city center. After that, Madame Maya's voice echoed in the city. For the time being, this continent will be closed first, she said, surprising many people. However, having understood, everyone was silent. She had enormous authority. Even if her husband didn't really build up power, no one dared to contradict him or his two wives' orders. And knowing that this was to help the Ice Prince, so no one dared to complain. Shwa la la. Pegasus finally came, stopping in front of Seal. At the same time, Jian Wuxin also returned. She looked at the winged white horse curiously. Seal was actually a bit confused now whether it was necessary to take Mu Ishue with him on the horse's back. It should have been like that, but now he had one additional woman that he didn't think it was suitable to ignore. Right, do you have a carriage? He asked Mu Ishue as he came up with an idea that he thought was better. The woman nodded, waving her hand, not really thinking about why he wanted a carriage right now. Maybe he wanted to sit while leaning his back. A carriage then appeared in front of them. It was made of ice gold, gold with a color similar to ice, looking more luxurious than normal gold. Seal calmly signaled to Pegasus to pull the carriage. After that, he said, let's ride. He looked at Mu Ishue then Jian Wuxin. The former immediately pouted as she finally realized that Seal wanted to be with her and Jian Wuxin at the same time. No wonder this guy wanted a carriage. The reason was not what she had expected. While Seal immediately climbed into the carriage, Mu Yishue and Jian Wuxin were still silent. In the end, there was awkwardness between them, so this was something difficult. But surprisingly enough, Jian Wuxin suddenly climbed into the carriage first. This was more surprising to Mu Ishue, even causing her beautiful lips to part. She was the owner of that carriage while Jian Wuxin was her enemy. Now she dared to precede her. Not wanting the woman to act up more, Mu Ishue finally climbed into the carriage as well. The people around who saw that looked at each other strangely, wondering how the ice prince made the two women ostensibly submit to him. Of course, they did not take Bernard's words seriously. They are too beautiful to be described with profanity. To them, it's more suitable to be called with romantic words. The only one who thought it was not romantic was Mei Mei who was sitting on her bear's head. Her eyes were wide open while her face was frozen. Over time, her breathing even quickened. No, no, I have to calm down. They will definitely kill each other someday, leaving the prince only for me, she said in a low voice, trying to comfort herself. Meanwhile, in the carriage, Mu Ishue sat beside Seal before Jian Wuxin could sit down. There were two seats there, each of which could actually be used for four people. However, under normal circumstances, it would be strange if three people sat on the same seat. 
one should have sat on a different seat so that they sat facing each other. Mu Ishue had a hunch that Jian Wuxin had a certain determination to get close to Seal. Perhaps it was because she knew that she had no other path, and she had to choose the path where she had to follow Seal, so she did everything with full resolution so that she could have the highest position or even suppress her in Seal's group. People with the heart of a sword always have such thoughts. Mu Ishue was sure Jian Wuxin would have deliberately sat next to Seal if she hadn't done it first, which was why she moved quickly. Only, she quickly discovered an unexpected move from Jian Wuxin. The woman apparently didn't sit on the opposite side, she actually chose to sit next to Seal even though she made some distance and stared at the window right after she sat down. Her expression was calm, seeming like she was pondering. What are you doing? Mu Ishue could not keep quiet because of that. In her eyes, this was more like a direct challenge. Even Seal was astonished. However, Jian Wuxin did not respond to Mu Ishue's question, nor did she change her expression or glance to the side. Hey Mississippi! Seal finally spoke up as well, calling out to her. And when he did speak, she finally turned her gaze towards him. What? she asked Seal. The latter observed her overly calm face, as if there were no ripples at all in her mind. Because of such an expression, Seal was also at a loss as to what to say to him. My father is a sword and I am also a sword. Surprisingly enough, she said something, something that neither Seal nor Mu Ishua understood. What does that mean? Seal asked. The best sword is the sharpest sword, the one that can cut through everything with a single slash. For any swordsman, it means doing things with full resolution. I don't like hesitation, since I chose this path, I will do it with an open heart. The woman replied, making Mu Ishue's eyes go extremely cold as this was indeed as she had expected. On the other hand, Seal opened his mouth, surprised by her way of thinking. It also pleased him so much that he smiled. I knew it, you're a great woman, he said. If you become my enemy, you will be a very great enemy. If you were my friend, you'd be a really great friend, and yeah, you become my woman, and it looks like you're going to be even greater. After saying that, Seal placed his hand over the woman's palm. Chapter 99 Short Trip You are listening at NovelFull.audio Jian Wuxin's reaction remained calm even though she saw Seal's hand touch hers. She didn't try to do anything or dodge, letting him do what he wanted. Seal was more curious because of that so he even shifted his butt until he actually arrived beside her, leaving Mu Ishua on the other side. Then, his hand slipped through her waist and embraced her. He pulled her slightly so that their bodies were completely pressed together. Her eyes looked into his, even with such conditions, she was still able to calm down. Hua. At the same time, Pegasus also moved, stepping into the air, but it did not cause any shocks to the carriage at all. Seal and Jian Wuxin were still staring at each other, a very disturbing sight to Mu Ishue. She finally turned her gaze outside, not wanting to look at them. However, she couldn't help but stare at them again as she watched Seal's face move closer to Jian Wuxin's. The latter was also silent, not trying to dodge at all. This bastard, do I have to keep seeing things like this in the future? Mu Ishue wondered. When it was Mei Mei, she could be dismissive, but Jian Wuxin could be said to be on par with her, and even had some advantages as she was the daughter of a supreme god, not just a disciple like her. She couldn't underestimate her at all. In a few moments, Seal's lips finally met with Jian Wuxin's. This time, there was a tremor in the woman's body, her eyes also widened, but all of that was only momentary. Only her heart was beating quite fast. I was kissed, she said to herself, looking intensely into Seal's silver eyes. She was surprised by the sensation she felt. In terms of appearance, she could not argue that Seal had a very striking appearance. When she had first met Seal, he had been able to ignore his appearance as she only recognized strength, but ever since Seal had subdued her in such a domineering manner where she was completely unable to resist, she could not help but admit that this man's charm was very strong, 
making her who had originally felt forced to become as if she was accepting all of this. It all made her understand what Mu Ishue meant. That woman shouldn't have accepted this either, but when it was already underway, she came to enjoy it. Over time, not only was her heart pounding, Jian Wuxin also felt her blood seem to heat up. On the other hand, Seal felt a great sense of satisfaction, as if he had passed a high mountain, something that no one could pass. It was indeed such a fact. Jian Wuxin would be considered an untouchable woman. Making her fall in love was harder than anything, and forcing her was impossible. Unfortunately, that case did not apply to Seal. He managed to force her, and it seemed like he was slowly making waves in her heart as well. He began to kiss her more deeply, pressing his lips against hers. At the same time, he sucked on her lips, making the air in her mouth flow into his along with a little of her saliva. Slowly, he pulled her body to face him. She could not stay still either, let alone in that position. In order to balance her body position, Jian Wuxin had to hold on to Seal's body. However, perhaps because something rose up inside her body, her hands occasionally moved without her realizing it, towards Seal's back. After a while, she even seemed to hug Seal. Mu Ishue rolled her eyes at the sight, thinking that Jian Wuxin actually responded to Seal quickly. At this moment, Jian Wuxin's breath became very warm and Seal could see the redness on her cheeks and neck. This woman's body could not resist his body, but the important thing was that her heart was also open to him. Seal became bolder, his hand moved, grabbing her breast, a movement that made her eyes tremble. Even Mu Ishue's eyes trembled violently just because she saw that. She had felt her breasts being groped by Seal's hands many times. Until now, she considered it a thrilling experience and full of amazing sensations. It was something that could make her become extremely tender and spontaneously continue to respond to Seal's movements. Now that Jian Wuxin was also about to experience it, she became worried. Fortunately, something suddenly stopped Seal before he could squeeze Jian Wuxin's breasts. The carriage had landed and also stopped, causing the three people in the carriage to wonder, has it arrived? This naturally bothered Seal. Even Jian Wuxin felt very disturbed as she began to sink into the pleasure of physical contact with Seal. And Seal also had no other choice but to break their kiss. I think we should stop here, it's because Pegasus is moving too fast, Seal said, seemingly complaining. Jian Wuxin couldn't help but roll her eyes and she subconsciously looked down, staring at Seal's hand that was still holding one of her breasts. Even she blushed at the sight. Fortunately Seal immediately moved his hand away from there. Wuxin. Seal suddenly called out to Jian Wuxin, making her have to look at him. When Seal's sparkling eyes met her calm ones, Seal said, I thought you were an anti-dot-romantic woman, it seems my previous thought was wrong, you might be more romantic than Ishua. Hearing his words, Jian Wuxin's eyes glanced in the other direction. I have no other choice, than for me to experience inner suffering, she replied. But you're starting to like it, right? Seal continued to tease her. It was something Jian Wuxin could not deny because she was not the type to lie to herself. It was comfortable and sensational, making her heart pound. She could not make any excuses to refute Seal's words. Why keep saying nonsense, let's go down, I want to see the tomb, she said, changing the topic. Seal laughed and nodded. Sure, but to be honest, I can't wait for our first night, he said which made Jian Wuxin's entire neck turn very red. It caused various imaginations to flash through her head. Chapter 100 The Tomb You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio When Seal and the other two got off the carriage, they couldn't help but be surprised at the number of people following behind them. The sky seemed to be full of people, even giving the impression that they were a swarm of bees. There were even some demigods hiding among the people. However, there was one striking similarity between them all. From their expressions, it looked like they just wanted to watch. Well, after I'm done, you guys can do whatever you want, Seal said to them before turning around, taking a step forward. Currently, 
they were actually in the area of the giant mountains. However, in front of them was a smaller mountain. The key in Seal's hand directed him to that mountain, which meant the entrance was there. Not wanting to bother searching, Seal activated the power of the eyes of heaven. With those eyes, he instantly discovered a faint thin aura collection that could barely be sensed. It was coming from the iron gate hidden behind the mass of vines. The gate seemed very old, already full of rust, but it still gave an oppressive feeling to Seal who observed it. After that, Seal pointed his finger at the area where the gate was and looked at Jian Wuxin. Help me get rid of those vines, he told her. Their numbers were actually very large, it would take a very strong swordsman to get rid of them. Fortunately Seal had Jian Wuxin by her side. The woman didn't nod in such in response to his words, instead she leaped straight into the air, appearing in front of the vines. The sword that had beheaded Bernard came out of its sheath again, looking even more ferocious than before. Whoosh! She slashed the sword forward. It did not hit the vines, nor did it produce any phenomenon like creating thousands of sword slashes. People who saw the sword movement were even made to think that Jian Wuxin was just practicing by slashing through the air. However, even without the phenomenon, the effect quickly became apparent. All the vines were cut into tiny leaves, so small that they could be directly used as condiments. They tumbled down, leaving the gate behind them. People were more interested in the gate, so they instantly forgot about Jian Wuxin's sword slash. Their eyes shone brightly, showing their greed. Even if the mountain king was only a demigod, his treasure was enough to make all the cultivators under the god realm enamored. However, he wasn't just a demigod, he was actually a young man with an unreasonable cultivation speed, and it was believed by many that he had an incomparable treasure. If it really existed, it must be within that tomb. Right at the right side of the gate, there was a small hole that was almost invisible. People would not have noticed it if not for the faint light emanating from it. Seal narrowed his eyes towards that hole. After which, he threw the key in his hand there. Whoosh! It quickly moved towards the hole, and landed right in it. Click! The key apparently turned itself, producing a faint sound. Right after that, the gate suddenly shook violently and the vibrations extended to the entire mountainous area. Some mountains even exploded instantly. The entire tomb is down below, people said, seemingly excited even though they had originally only come to watch. However, they also had high hopes because Seal had previously said that they could enter after he was done. Given Seal's background, they thought he would only take the mysterious treasure, he should have ignored the others since the Ice Palace had more resources. As long as Seal left the resources hidden in the tomb, they were already quite satisfied that they could fight over them. Slowly, the gate began to open, revealing the space behind it. There, there was a passage surrounded by red dot-colored stone walls. It was difficult to see further as it was really very dark and light could not enter due to its position. However, since it was connected to the outside world, people suddenly smelled the fragrance of various rare herbs. ENV, as expected, the mountain king has destroyed quite a few sects on his journey. He has plundered their resources so the resources he has are more than most fourth-stage demigods. Some old man said. Yeah, I'm sure there are quite a few who can help us break through, another replied. I just hope the demigods can't get in. That way, we'll be the biggest players there. Too bad we can't know until we try. Dot. On the other side, Seal looked at Mu Ishue and the other Ice Palace disciples. He said, follow me. After that, he took a step. However, at the same time, a black dot-haired female figure suddenly appeared beside him like a ghost. She quickly attracted people's attention. Of course, she was Kaya. Seeing her, Mu Ishue immediately saluted and greeted her. Senior sister, she said softly. Kaya nodded to Mu Ishue before saying to Seal, Prince, let me try to enter, if it works, things will be easier for you. Apparently, she wanted to investigate the tomb. Of course, when talking about Kaya, 
it wasn't just about whether or not the tomb could be entered by demigods. Even if the tomb did not allow demigods, that case might not apply to Kaya since she had a very extraordinary ability to hide, or even deceive the eyes of others. Because of that ability, she could naturally deceive the formation on that tomb. Seal nodded in response. Her help was indeed much needed. His safety can be assured with the formations inside his body, even attacking hidden monsters won't be difficult with Mu Ishua and Jian Wuxin by his side. However, all obstacles could be removed quickly if Kaya also came along. After Seal nodded, Kaya immediately moved. She flew slowly to the entrance of the tomb, observed by everyone, especially the demigods. Unfortunately, when she arrived in front of the entrance, a faint light shaped like a shield suddenly appeared, blocking her steps. When she touched it, the entire mountain range shook again. Failure The demigods were instantly disappointed when they saw that. Maybe they could force it with force, but the result could be worse as the tomb could have destroyed itself. However, just when they were disappointed, Kaya suddenly moved backwards before advancing again. This time, she moved so fast that no one could see her anymore. Surprisingly, after that she completely disappeared.